Imagine diving into the ocean and stumbling upon a shipwreck from 2,000 years ago. Sounds like a treasure hunt, right? Well, back in 1900, Greek divers near Antikythera Island did just that. But the real treasure wasn't gold or gems. It was a mysterious device with intricate gears, later known as the Antikythera Mechanism, the world's first known analog computer. This ancient device, with at least 37 interlocking gears, was designed to predict astronomical events and eclipses centuries ahead of its time. This discovery baffled scientists for decades. How could an ancient civilization, with no knowledge of modern technology, create something so advanced? The device had a complex system of dials and gears, which, when rotated, could precisely track celestial movements. Some experts even argue that if such knowledge had been carried forward, we might have had mechanical computers centuries earlier. So how did we get from bronze gears to silicon chips, and now quantum qubits that can process unimaginable calculations in seconds? Buckle up, fellas. This is the entire history of computing, explained. Fast forward to the 17th century, when French mathematician Blaise Pascal built the first mechanical calculator, the Pascaline. It could add and subtract using dials and gears, paving the way for mechanical computation. Pascal built this device to help his father, a tax collector, perform calculations more efficiently. Imagine doing tax calculations manually. Sounds exhausting, right? The Pascaline saved countless hours of manual work. Later, a German mathematician, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, improved upon Pascal's design, creating the Step Reckoner, capable of multiplication and division. Leibniz had a vision. He believed that machines could someday think like humans. He even conceptualized binary arithmetic, the very foundation of modern computing. Today, every smartphone, laptop, and AI system runs on binary code, a concept developed over 300 years ago. But the real father of modern computing? That title belongs to Charles Babbage, a British mathematician who designed the difference engine in the 1820s. It was a massive, steam-powered calculator that could compute polynomial equations. Babbage then conceptualized the analytical engine, which had memory, loops, and the ability to be programmed using punch cards. Incredibly, his assistant, Ada Lovelace, wrote the first-ever algorithm, making her the world's first programmer. Did you know? On a lighter note, let me tell you here, Babbage once called street musicians public nuisances and wanted to ban them because their noise distracted his computing work. Okay, let's now enter the 20th century, where computation took a quantum leap, literally. In the 1940s, computers evolved from mechanical to electronic, thanks to the invention of the vacuum tube. These were glass tubes filled with gas that controlled the flow of electricity, allowing for faster calculations. One of the first electronic computers, ENIAC 1945, was the size of a room, used 18,000 vacuum tubes, and could perform 5,000 additions per second, 1,000 times faster than mechanical devices, a feat back then. However, vacuum tubes had a serious flaw. They were prone to overheating and would often burn out, requiring constant maintenance. These early computers were also power hungry, consuming as much electricity as a small town. Then, in 1947, physicists at Bell Labs, John Bardeen, Walter Bratton, and William Shockley, revolutionized computing by inventing the transistor, a tiny semiconductor device that replaced vacuum tubes. Transistors were smaller, faster, and used less power, marking the beginning of the Silicon Age. By the 1960s, computers were still massive and used mainly by governments and corporations. But everything changed in 1971, when Intel introduced the first microprocessor, the Intel 4004. This tiny chip could perform thousands of calculations per second and laid the foundation for personal computers, PCs. Then came Apple and Microsoft, which turned computers from giant corporate machines to household devices. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak's Apple II, 1977, made computing user-friendly, while Bill Gates's Windows operating system, 1985, brought PCs to the masses. Amazing, isn't it? Did you know?
The first ever computer mouse, invented in 1964 by Douglas Engelbart, was made of wood. As personal computers grew popular, supercomputers took over high-performance computing. Machines like IBM's Deep Blue, 1997, which defeated world chess champion Garry Kasparov, showcased the immense power of parallel computing. And today's fastest supercomputer? El Capitan, just launched in 2024, boasts a processing power of two quintillion calculations per second. But even this $6.5 billion beast is just a warm-up act compared to what's next. Yes, you got that right. Quantum computing. So the quantum computers, machines that don't just compute faster, they compute differently. Instead of traditional bits, which are either zero or one, quantum computers use qubits, which can be both zero and one simultaneously due to superposition. They also leverage entanglement, where qubits influence each other instantaneously, regardless of distance. This results in exponential speed gains over classical systems. This allows quantum computers to perform mind-bending calculations at speeds impossible for classical computers. For instance, Google Google's Sycamore Quantum Processor 2019 achieved quantum supremacy by solving a problem in 200 seconds that would take the world's most powerful supercomputer 10,000 years. That's 158 million times faster. But that doesn't stop here. Quantum computing could revolutionize fields like cryptography, breaking today's most secure encryption in minutes, AI and machine learning, training models at speeds never imagined, medical research, simulating molecules to develop new drugs, space exploration, mapping entire universes at quantum speeds. Did you know? A quantum computer could, in theory, simulate every atom in the universe, making it the ultimate problem solver. Despite their promise, quantum computers face certain hurdles extreme cooling. Qubits require temperatures near absolute zero, minus 273 degrees Celsius, to remain stable. Error rates. Qubits are highly fragile and prone to computational errors. Scaling issues. Increasing the number of qubits while maintaining stability is a significant challenge. However, scientists worldwide are racing to overcome these barriers. IBM, Google, and startups like Xanadu are developing quantum chips that may one day replace classical computing. While quantum computers promise a new era of problem solving, they are still experimental and require extreme cooling to function. Scientists are now working on error correction, scalability, and practical applications to fuse quantum computing into everyday life. But what's next? Some scientists predict about biocomputers, machines that use DNA instead of silicon to process information. Others foresee neurocomputing, where human brains interface directly with AI. That's really cool, man. However, one thing is clear. We're just getting started. From mechanical gears to quantum magic, the evolution of computers is nothing short of mind-blowing. And as technology leaps forward, the next breakthrough is just around the corner. Well, there you have it. From the very gears of anti kythera mechanism to quantum qubits, the future of computing isn't just faster. It's unimaginable.